Okay, this is a tutorial looking at um, integrating a variety of different raster data. So again, we'll look at stuff from the Jebel Samhan area. So let's have a Jebel Samhan extent because it helps to, to frame where we are. We're going to add in some raster data. Now here we can have the the Landsat image, but let's also load in a variety of others. So in the Jabal Samhan directory, we've got uh, the Iconos image. There's a mosaic of all of them. And we will add in the GOI. Okay. And we will add in Oh, we will leave it there, in fact. Um, so these are all of the satellite images we have, or I have, at the minute for Jebel Samhan region. So, call me large area here. So we have the Landsat in the background, we have the Iconos, and we have the GOI. Now, each of these data sets uh, comes from a different satellite. You will also have uh, a different da data set there with you, which is the um, which is the spot maps, which is a false color composite. Uh, sorry, it's a true color composite, uh, two and a half meter resolution. So you can you'll be able to to contextualize that in a bit as we go through this tutorial. So the GOI data is half a meter ground resolution. So let's set the stretch here and apply it. Okay, and let's zoom in. So, as you can see in this rather pretty data, you can see the individual scrub elements. We also have panchromatic data for this area. So, if we look at this again, now you only get to see grayscale, a single band grey, so we can look at this as a grayscale image. We will again stretch and clip to, to min max. And sorry, this is 50 centimeters. Underneath this, you then got 2 meter. And so 50 centimeters is in panchromatic, that's black and white. And the 2 meter data is in multispectral, so that's near infrared, uh, red, green, and blue. So if we do a false color composite, putting the near infrared to the red gun, the red to the green gun, and the green to the blue gun, you see these little areas here of vegetation coming out redder. Okay, and that's all to be expected. So if we zoom out a little bit more, you can start to see structural components in this landscape, which is all very funky. Underneath this, we have the Iconos. And if we tweak between the two, you'll notice that there's a difference in geometric location of each data set. And that's because um, you're in quite a hilly environment and these data have not been corrected for topographic distortion. That's they haven't been orthorectified. So orthorectification is the process of removing uh, distortion effects introduced by terrain variations. Now the spot map, which you should have while you're out in the field, has been corrected for, uh, for terrain distortion, it's all for rectified imagery. Uh, that means that if you measure something on the ground uh, with your GPS and you overlay it with something that comes from ortho rectified data, the spatial accuracy between the two should be quite close. Whereas for data which has not been corrected for terrain distortions, you could have a variety of different errors that means that your data won't match. So if you're taking formal measurements um, or metric measurements and you want to correlate those with GPS 
locations in the field, then you should be using all for rectified data. So anyway, getting back to the Iconos, uh, this is the Iconos data. Now this is uh, one meter resolution. This is pan sharpened color data. And so what they've done is they have the you know the Iconos data tends to come in two well it comes in two forms and same with the, the GOI does you have one meter black and white and you have four meter uh, multispectral so that's red green blue and near infrared and they merge them together in a process known as pan sharpening and so you can get one meter color imagery uh, the problem with that is it completely disrupts the the, the the structure of the signal so you can't do quantitative work with it uh, but it does produce a visually appealing image and so if you're doing visual interpretation then it's a it's you know, an okay thing for you to do okay so let's zoom out a little bit more and we can then start to have a look oh well, what's going on with the Landsat. So again, let's put that down to a position uh, three, two, one. True color composite. Let's clip them in a map. Okay, and you can see elements of the structure of the Wadi systems at this scale, but nothing as clearly as you can see in the Iconos data. Or the same with the GOI data. And that's because the Landsat is at 30 meter cell resolution. But as we zoom further and further out, the structure of the landscape becomes more apparent. And you can still see it in the GOI image. But the Landsat data covers a much larger area. So there we are. So there's the GOI and there's the Landsat. Okay, And it means we can look at structural patterning on a variety of, of different scales. Okay, I think that will do for now.